How do our bodies react to stress or danger? How do our bodies help protect us from cold or heat? Why do we grow? And why do we stop growing? What kinds of changes occur during puberty? Answers to these and many other questions lie in hormones and the endocrine system. A city is a complex community. Millions of people perform thousands of different kinds of jobs. Streets and highways provide transportation networks, enabling people and products to get from one place to another. These activities and many others need to be coordinated and regulated in order for a city to function smoothly. Traffic lights, for example, help ensure the smooth flow of vehicles and pedestrians by signaling them when to go and when to stop. Imagine the gridlock that would result if traffic lights were to fail, or if each light wasn't synchronized to work with other lights. The human body is far more complex than any city. It is made up of many different organs and trillions of cells whose activities also need to be carefully regulated in order for it to function. The body has two main systems for coordinating and regulating its activities. One is the nervous system, which consists of the brain, spinal cord, and a network of nerves that branch throughout the body. The other system is the endocrine system. The endocrine system consists of different endocrine glands. These glands produce chemicals called hormones that the body needs. Endocrine glands secrete or release their hormones into the vast network of blood vessels that make up the circulatory system. Carried along in the blood, hormones are chemical messengers that reach cells throughout the body. Each kind of hormone acts only on specific kinds of target cells. A target cell has a receptor on its surface. A receptor is a place where a hormone can latch onto the target cell. Hormones and receptors fit together like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. A specific hormone will attach only to the receptor sites of a specific kind of cell. When a hormone reaches a target cell, it causes the cell to respond. For example, a hormone may signal the cell to produce certain chemicals the body needs. Hormones may also signal cells to stop producing certain chemicals. One example of how hormones work is provided by the parathyroid glands. These four small glands are embedded in a larger endocrine gland called the thyroid. The parathyroid glands secrete a hormone called parathyroid hormone. The target cells for this hormone are in the bones. When it reaches its target cells, the hormone causes these bone cells to release calcium into the blood. The body needs a certain amount of calcium. The endocrine system works more slowly than the nervous system, which also regulates the activities of our bodies. For example, if you touch a hot iron, the nervous system senses the heat almost instantaneously and sends signals to muscles that make you pull your hand back. In other situations, the nervous system works closely with the endocrine system in ways that are slower but more long-lasting than when the nervous system responds by itself. Imagine you are walking down a dark alley. You feel alone, vulnerable, and scared. Through your sense of sight and other senses, the nervous system detects what may be a dangerous situation and signals the endocrine system to respond. In response to these signals, your adrenal glands, located on top of your kidneys, secrete two hormones, epinephrine, also known as adrenaline, and norepinephrine. 
These hormones have several different effects on your body. They cause your heart to beat faster, blood pressure to increase, and they direct blood to muscles and the brain. All these responses prepare you to fight or run away. In fact, together they are called the fight or flight response. The fight or flight response has helped soldiers to perform and survive in combat even when they have gone without sleep for days and were otherwise near exhaustion. But even in situations that aren't dangerous, the same hormones may be at work. A student giving a piano recital is an example. Sitting down at the keyboard, she feels nervous about performing in front of an audience. Her heart beats faster. Her blood pressure rises. These and other responses result from the actions of epinephrine and other hormones and make her more alert and better able to perform. Normally, hormones do their job and then are quickly broken down into simpler elements. The body maintains a delicate internal balance. If epinephrine and other hormones remained at higher than normal levels in the student's blood after her recital, they could cause harm. The proper functioning of endocrine glands and the hormones they secrete are vital to our health. This is Dr. David Bloomgarten, an endocrinologist. An endocrinologist is a doctor who specializes in hormones and endocrine glands. If there is too much production or too little production of a particular hormone, one can see changes in the body that are off the normal path. When there's too much, that can be a problem. When there's too little, that can be a problem. The endocrine system is a fascinating system, one which is constantly run by checks and balances. The body has ways of detecting how much of a hormone is in the blood and then directing the appropriate endocrine glands to turn on or off as needed. A thermostat illustrates how this system works. A thermostat monitors the inside temperature of a house and signals a furnace to turn on or off in order to keep the temperature close to a desired level. Suppose the thermostat is set at 68 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 20 degrees Celsius. If the temperature falls below 68 degrees, the thermostat senses this. It then signals the furnace to turn on. The heat from the furnace causes the temperature to rise. When the temperature reaches 68 degrees again, the thermostat senses this. It then signals the furnace to turn off. Like a house, we too have a kind of thermostat that helps us maintain a fairly constant temperature inside our bodies, even when the temperature outside changes. Imagine you are waiting to be picked up by a school bus on a cold winter day. It helps if you are dressed warmly. But your body also has ways of helping you cope with the cold. A part of the brain called the hypothalamus plays the role of the body's thermostat. The hypothalamus monitors the temperature inside the body and helps keep it around 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit or 37 degrees Celsius. If the temperature drops below this level, the hypothalamus signals a nearby endocrine gland, the pituitary. In response to these signals from the hypothalamus, the pituitary releases a hormone that acts upon the thyroid, an endocrine gland located in the lower neck. This hormone is called TSH, or thyroid stimulating hormone. When stimulated by TSH, the thyroid in turn releases another hormone, thyroxine. Thyroxine causes cells throughout the body to release more heat, just as the furnace in a house turns on to release more heat. As a result, the body's internal temperature rises. The actions of the hypothalamus illustrate once again how closely the endocrine and nervous systems work together. 
This pea-sized part of the brain constantly checks conditions inside the body. In addition to temperature, it monitors blood pressure, the amount of water and salt in our blood, and many other things. The hypothalamus is a rather unique organ in the human body. It helps to check conditions within the body and at the same time directs hormones to target tissues, in some instances helping to start and in other instances helping to stop certain conditions that need to be regulated within the human body. While it is part of the brain, the hypothalamus also acts like an endocrine gland by releasing hormones that affect the ways other endocrine glands do their jobs. These hormones move to the nearby pituitary gland. The pituitary secretes many different kinds of hormones. Some signal other endocrine glands to secrete their own hormones. The pituitary gland is a remarkable gland often referred to as the master gland. It tells other endocrine organs when to turn on and when to turn off. And the pituitary gland has the role of regulating a whole host of other hormones in the body. In this way, the endocrine system is like a smoothly coordinated orchestra. The pituitary is the conductor of this orchestra and other endocrine glands are different musicians that the conductor signals when to play and when not to play. See, you're way higher than dad's waist now. Besides regulating the actions of other endocrine glands, the pituitary secretes growth hormone, which targets cells in the bones, muscles, and other places in the body. This hormone regulates growth throughout childhood. In early adolescence, the pituitary increases the amount of growth hormone it secretes, and growth can be particularly rapid. But when most people are about 16 to 18 years old, they stop growing, because their bones and other tissues stop responding to growth hormone. Sometimes the pituitary doesn't produce the right amount of growth hormone. The consequences can be dramatic. In the 1800s, a person nicknamed Tom Thumb was unusually short because his pituitary produced too little growth hormone. When he was 11, he was only 25 inches or 64 centimeters tall. A century later, Robert Wadlow grew to a height of almost 9 feet or about 270 centimeters because his pituitary produced too much growth hormone. Here, he towers over his normal size father. Examples like Tom Thumb and Robert Wadlow, however, are rare. People with normal amounts of growth hormone grow to be many different sizes. While hormones regulate growth, diet and other factors also affect how tall or short a person will be. Size isn't the only change that occurs as a child grows into an adult. Look at a series of photographs of the same person taken over a number of years. As she went through childhood, she grew bigger. But the differences between an eight-year-old and the same person when she was 13 become noticeable for other reasons as well. These changes differ for boys and girls. For girls, endocrine glands called the ovaries control the onset of puberty, the time when a person becomes sexually mature. The ovaries produce a hormone called estrogen. As estrogen levels increase during puberty, girls develop breasts, body hair, as well as fat around their hips and other parts of their bodies. In boys, endocrine glands called testes produce another kind of hormone, testosterone. Testosterone causes their voices to become deeper and their muscles to become bigger. They also grow facial hair and hair on other parts of their bodies. For both males and females, certain hormones prepare their bodies for parenthood. Sperm cells develop in the testes. Menstruation begins. 
A female's menstrual cycle, in which the ovaries release eggs, is also controlled by the actions of different hormones. Although the effects of hormones during puberty are dramatic, hormones play important roles throughout the human lifespan. A hormone called oxytocin causes contractions of the uterus during labor. After a child is born, oxytocin and another hormone called prolactin cause the breasts to produce milk. Somewhere between the ages of 45 and 55, other hormonal changes occur in women. Their ovaries produce less estrogen and stop releasing eggs. This is called menopause. At this stage in their lives, they can no longer conceive children. As men get older, the levels of testosterone decline. Among other effects, they lose some muscle tone. As people continue to age, still other hormonal changes occur, and scientists are researching the effects of hormones on the aging process. Endocrine glands and their hormones do many other things. The thymus, for example, helps our bodies fight bacteria and viruses that cause disease. The pancreas plays other important roles in maintaining our health. Embedded inside the pancreas are endocrine cells that secrete the hormone insulin. Insulin helps regulate the amount of a certain kind of sugar in our blood. This sugar is called glucose. Glucose is the body's fuel. It provides the energy for cells to function, as gasoline provides the fuel and energy for a car. Just as with other substances in the body, the amount of glucose in the bloodstream has to be kept within narrow limits in order for us to function well. Drinking an ice cream milkshake, for example, will slightly raise the levels of glucose in our blood. When there is too much glucose in the blood, the pancreas responds by producing more insulin. Insulin removes excess glucose and stores it in the liver. For most of us, this finely tuned system helps maintain just the right levels of glucose. But for some people, the pancreas doesn't function properly. My name's Peter and I have diabetes. Diabetes is a disease of the endocrine system. It's when the pancreas stops making insulin. Peter has to carefully keep track of what he eats and how much he exercises because both these things affect how much glucose is in his blood. If Peter's diabetes were left untreated, excess glucose would lead to serious health problems. To take care of myself, I need to um, take blood tests. When I take a blood test, I'm measuring the amount of uh, glucose that's in my blood. Based on the levels of glucose, Peter gives himself injections of insulin. Taking insulin is a way of keeping my blood glucose regulated. Like the more insulin you take, the lower your sugar will be because insulin lowers your um, blood glucose level. So I want to take um, you know, the right amount so it's not too high or not too low. Developments in the treatment of diabetes have given hope to people like Peter that they can lead normal lives. We are learning more about other problems with the endocrine system as well. For example, scientists are researching the effects of hormones on human emotions, particularly depression. What makes people anxious or sad? These are questions that have often been the focus of art, and more and more, they are also the focus of medicine. We are daily learning more about how the endocrine system may affect our mood, how our day-to-day -day living may be affected by hormonal changes. And as we better understand those hormonal changes, we can hope to improve the lives of those individuals who may be depressed or may have problems with mood swings. Hopefully we'll be able to address those issues in the future. Our endocrine glands and the hormones they produce maintain a delicate chemical balance, a balance that is essential to our health and survival. Hormones play many different roles that affect the entire body. They help keep our internal temperatures stable. 
they help us respond to danger and perform well under stress. Hormones control how we grow and how we change from boys and girls into men and women. These chemical messengers ensure that our blood contains the right amounts of the glucose fuel our cells need to function. As we learn more about the human endocrine system, scientists hope to develop new and better treatments for a variety of diseases and to better understand the emotions and feelings that are part of being human. Thank you.